Hi everyone and welcome back to the Organized Notebook. In this video, we'll be going over the differences between Google Calendar versus Notions Calendar. We'll discuss the strengths and weaknesses of each one. If you're wondering which one to use or whether you should use both of them, we hope our insight can help you make a decision. Let's start by going over the strengths of Notions Calendar. So let's actually just go ahead and make a calendar view database. So for that, you have to type slash calendar and we'll just create a calendar view to show what you can do. And let's do small text full width to fit more in the page and let's get started. So one of the biggest strengths of Notions Calendar is that you can fit a huge amount of information into one calendar entry. So let's say we wanted to add an event here and it was a meeting. Well, now you can just assign the date to this meeting but also you can have this huge limitless space where you can just continuously type information. So this is great for adding notes to a meeting and so on. So the amount of information you can just add to a calendar entry is very limitless. You can add a huge number of properties. So you could add anything from numbers, select, status, person, files, media, checkboxes and so on. So that's a huge strength for Notion in that it's very versatile and you can do what you want sort of with each entry into your calendar. And also you can save templates here. So if you put a plus new template and then you made meeting note template, you could put some meeting notes here. So ask question And then you had a question here, sample question. And then if you save this, then you go add another entry here and you wanted the meeting note template, it's right here. So the next time you have a meeting, then all you have to do is just keep clicking and then your template gets duplicated into your, your meeting like so. And the other reason why Notions Calendar is very strong is that it's actually possible to just change your view into whatever you want that's available in terms of database view. So let's say we had three events here and you actually just want to see this in a table. You can go to layout and then just click table. And then you already have this table view of your previous calendar. So that's a huge strength that you can just click board you could click timeline, list, gallery, and with one click, you can see your calendar in very different formats. So that's another strength for Notion's calendar. And the other thing is that you can make it part of your workspace. So this is really big right now, but let's say that if you wanted it into columns, you could do slash column, slash column, and you had two columns, you could just move this calendar into your other column. And then you could add more information here. So you could easily set up like a, a personal page workspace with a nice calendar that you can edit on the side. So everything is just very versatile and mobile. So that would be Notion Calendar's strength. Next, let's go over some of Google Calendar's strengths. So the first thing that Google Calendar does really well is that you can actually see your calendar in many different formats. So if you go here, you'll notice that you can select it to view by day, you can select to view by week, month, year, schedule, four days, and so on. So this is really versatile in that sense that you could see a day view, a week view, month view, and this is super useful. And the next thing is that you can actually just click your calendar entry and automatically choose if this is an event or a task. So this kind of built-in function is really useful. And for example, in Notion, you can't really do that. You have to add a, a tag or kind of make it yourself. So this is very nice that you can just click it, whether it's an event or a task, very quickly. And the other thing that's nice is that you can actually just create a meeting just right through your calendar. So 
You can add Google Meet video conferencing and things like that. So making meetings is very easy and you can invite guests and send emails and things like that. So making meetings is really great with Google Calendar. And the other thing that's really nice is that you can actually customize the colors with hex codes. So you're not stuck with these colors that they give you. You could actually just click these three dots here, click the plus sign, and then just add custom colors. So if you really wanted to customize your calendar with your custom color palette, that's totally possible with Google Calendar. And the other cool thing is that you can add importable calendars such as national holidays and even other people's calendars by clicking plus here and then browse calendars of interest and you can find regional holidays, global religious holidays, sports, even phases of the moon and things like that. So this is quite nice if you need to know the holidays for your country, for example. And then it's also very easy to share one specific calendar. So with Notion, you actually have to share the whole thing. But with Google Calendar, you can even set an event to be private or not. And you can also just share like a whole calendar by adding a new calendar. So that's also very useful with Google Calendar. Next, let's go over the weaknesses of Notion's calendar. So one of the biggest weaknesses of Notion's calendar is that you cannot combine multiple calendars into one. Well, multiple calendars, meaning if you have two databases, you cannot put them into the same calendar. And this is something that we're really hoping that Notion will change in the future because it can be really difficult if you have two sets of databases and you just really want to see them in one calendar. But we do understand that it's probably because of the properties. So if you have one set of properties here and then in another database, you have different properties to combine them into one calendar is probably a bit difficult. So what we end up doing actually is that we'll add tags and then we have to filter the calendar based on tags just to get this multiple calendar effect. But it's always kind of not the same as having the ability to just put them both into one calendar. Uh, the other thing that's a weakness with Notion's calendar is that you cannot pre-enter recurring events. So if you had this meeting note template and you wanted it to happen every week, you can only set it as repeat every week. And then it's just going to it's just going to sort of spawn this new meeting note template at the time that you set it every every week. So in Google Calendar, you can actually just generate your calendar to just already have these events in place so that you'll never you'll always see it on your calendar. But with Notion's calendar, you either have to place them in manually or just wait until a certain time for this event to just pop up automatically. So this is another thing that we hope that Notion will change at some point or give us the option to have events that are going to just automatically appear in the calendar based on the frequency that you want. And the other weakness is that you cannot schedule meetings and online sort of events that you send invitations and things like that through Notion's calendar. So in that sense, it's a bit limiting if you need to reach out to people and schedule online meetings and things like that. Notion's calendar is not really suitable for that. And the other thing is the lack of views. So if you go to the three dots here and then click layout, you'll see that show calendar as month and week. So there's only two options in how you can see the calendar. And let's say you're trying to make a daily task list, then it gets super cluttered if you're just in the month view. And even in the week view, it can sometimes be super cluttered as well. So you cannot really read all of your text of what your tasks are. So that's another thing that we hope that Notion will fix someday is to have more views like daily and more. 
just so you can see your calendar better. Next, let's go over the weaknesses of Google's Calendar. And one of the big weaknesses of Google's Calendar is that you cannot add a lot of information into a calendar entry. So let's say we click here and we wanted to add a bunch of notes and things like that. This is our little box that we can actually add information. And I don't think that it's actually meant for this because it just says add description. So it's not here so that you take these lengthy notes or to take notes on the meeting. This is not really the place to do that. I mean, you could still sort of do it, but it's not really ideal. So let's say that you wanted to make a daily journal. This is not the exact place to do it. So Google Calendar is more of a scheduling tool than let's say like a journaling tool or a place to store data. So that's why in that sense, Google Calendar cannot do what Notion does really well, which is to add a lot of information into the each entry. And you cannot really set templates either. So you're not going to be able to have a, a meeting note template pop up every week. At this point, you might be wondering whether there's any possibility to use both or combine the two calendars. And at the moment, Notion and Google Calendar don't have a great integration with each other. And one thing you can do if you have a Google Calendar is that you can embed your Google Calendar into Notion pages. But to do this, you actually have to make sure that your Google Calendar is public. So it's not really ideal because you might have some privacy concerns. But if you're OK with it being public, then what you can do is go to your settings and then go to settings for my calendar and then integrate calendar. And then you can copy the public URL. And if you go to your Notion page, you can type slash embed and then add it as a link, an embed link. And then you'll get your Google Calendar here. But obviously, it's a little bit clunky and you cannot edit it in here directly either. So it's not really ideal unless you just need to see your calendar in this kind of format. Uh, some people have also talked about automations and how you can connect and sync both ways between Notion's calendar and Google Calendar. And we'll be doing a video about that at some point. But personally, we feel like Notion's calendar and Google Calendar can be separate because they're both very different calendars. So Notion's calendar is really good for storing information or having daily journals and things like that. And Google Calendar is really great for making meetings and scheduling appointments and adding guests and things like that. So let us know in the comments, what do you think about Notion's calendar versus Google Calendar? What do you think are the strengths and weaknesses? And do you use both? We'd love to hear from you and hope to see you in the next video.